Well, the whole reason Jesus came and reconciled the world to himself is so we would live free from the fear of punishment. Hey, welcome. So good to be back with you again. I want to ask you another question. Do you have fear of judgment? Do you afraid that God is going to judge you? Well, we want to deal with that some today, that there is no fear of us being judged by God if you're in Christ Jesus. Man, we can rejoice, Denise, that I know Jesus is in me and I don't ever have to worry about fear or dread of what God might do to me again. Yeah, well, the whole reason Jesus came and reconciled the world to himself is so we would live free from the fear of punishment. When you think about it, think of someone you know might have been in combat and suffered PTSD. Through those traumatic experiences, people are paralyzed and, and really rendered helpless and unable to move ahead in life until that root gets dealt with. There has to be a healing from that trauma. Well, fear, we've given fear a gold star as if it serves some purpose, and it really doesn't. And we're gonna show you that through some of the scriptures today that we look at. So we wanna look at the fear of God in the new covenant. And we've talked about earlier, a couple weeks back about, really Jesus interchanged the words the fear of the Lord with worship of the Lord. Come on. And so the fear of God is really to worship him. You know, Second Timothy, it says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but his power, his love, and a sound mind. You know, anytime you see anybody trying to motivate you through fear, it's not God. And this whole nation was moved and held together and walked on little dots every six feet and held themselves there with these masks on them. And it was all to motivate you through fear. You might get this sickness. You might get that sickness. We have the vaccination of Jesus. <laughs> we don't have to worry about any fear of sickness or what God might do to us. And so if you're here today, we're saying Jesus took the judgment of God on himself so you wouldn't have to. And if you are in Christ Jesus, there should be no more fear of judgment. So I want to look at this scripture and you can comment on it. But sure. 1 John 5, 14 through 19, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he in God. And we have known and believed that love that God has to us, God's love and he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness, boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in the world. That's good. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. So no fear in the day of judgment. I don't care what's going on, bombs dropping around me, fires happening, coming this way. I should never have fear of being judged by the Father because Jesus was judged for me. And Denise, when I can get to that place, and I believe I'm at that place, there's no fear of God's judgment. I, I mean, Crazy things. There's been a lot of reports. Last days. What could God be doing? But we don't need to fear the last days. We don't need to fear judgment day or what might be happening around us in the news. Well, because we've been judged righteous. I'll say that again, Denise. Because we've been we, judged. Yeah. As a believer, now we're in Christ and we are judged righteous. Now, I want you to get a hold of that. If you're in Christ, you have been past tense already judged you have been judged righteous well, by and what Jesus did. According to that scripture I just read, again, that was 1 John 4. Amazingly, that's telling us it is wrong for us as New Testament believers in Christ to 
fear God's judgments. It's wrong for us to see a lot of people don't believe that way, but that's what that verse just said. So another one, I want to expound on these verses because sometimes these are taught in a way and people misunderstand them. Even in uh, Hebrews 12, uh, it says, wherefore we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire. Well, people often take that immediately because the word fires in there that they're in trouble or could be. And so let's look at it. What, what do we have grace to serve God acceptably? What's acceptably? Well, it's faith. Come on. That's how we serve God. We believe, faith to believe any of this. Faith is trust, and that's how we serve God. It takes faith to acknowledge who He is. So reverence and godly fear is about seeing God, the magnitude of His being, and then ascribing greatness to His name. It's not taking greatness for yourself, but it's saying, God, you are great. That, and so if we're if we're uh, if we're exalting ourselves, that's downplaying God. That would not be humility at all. And that's the opposite. That's self-righteousness. We're saying the fear of God that the self-righteous have is God's judging us for not being righteous enough. Well, that's messed that's up. That's self-righteousness. Yeah, that's messed up. The fear of God that the Christ's righteous have is God has qualified us all to share in what he's accomplished. If you've been listening to this and wondered or feared what might happen to you if a big bomb dropped or something, if Jesus is in you, his Holy Spirit came on the inside of you, you should have no fear or dread of what might happen to you. No more fear of judgment. I pray right now that fear of judgment comes off of you if you're in Christ Jesus. And if you haven't received him, say, Jesus, come in my heart. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. I trust you from this day forward. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. We'll see you again soon.